everyone. I'm Swarnika Tiwari, and I will be talking to you today about how to become an effective data analyst. Now, you must be thinking that you need a lot a computer science degree or an education in data analytics or data science, no machine learning to be able to become a data analyst. While there are certainly jobs that require that, I, my pitch to you is that you just need to be yourself. And as long as you have the correct personality traits, you will become an effective data analyst. So the focus of today's presentation is mainly focused on you, who you are and what it takes to be an effective data analyst is all within you or uh, characteristics or skills you can develop over time. Then it is about you and your skills. And then the last portion of this presentation is talking to uh, talking about you and the people you work with. Because in addition to the skills, technical skills that you have, people are equally as important and knowing who to go to for which problem or who your key stakeholders are, identifying them is almost as important as knowing which machine learning model to pick for your presentation. So let's get into right into it. Well, so who is a successful data analyst? A successful data analyst is not just a person who has a computer science degree or a person who knows about machine learning models or a person who is uh, an expert in statistics. statistics. A successful data analyst possesses skills of critical thinking, creativity, curiosity, and persistence, which, and I'll go uh, one by one deeper into how you use this, these skills as a data analyst. Well, critical thinking is definitely uh, something that is indispensable for a data analyst. You would want to look many times we are presented with problems and information that are vague in nature. You, uh, you'll be presented a problem with from a stakeholder, which is like, uh, do I know, how do I understand that this product is successful? And you as a data analyst would use your critical thinking and logical deduction skills to break down the problem into its components, analyze uh, set up hypothesis, analyze those hypotheses, and prove and disprove your uh, your hypothesis. So critical thinking becomes a in uh, a very important characteristic to have, and this is something you can still develop, and uh, which is where the curiosity comes in. Curiosity is another way of representing a growth mindset. If you are a person who's always uh, on the lookout for learning new technologies, learning new uh, skills, then you would be a successful data analyst. And the reason behind this is data itself is a very new field in the, considering the peer group of uh, skills like software engineering. So the con technologies are constantly evolving. So that means that having that curiosity mindset will help you be an effective and successful data analyst because you're constantly learning, not just from uh, not just tools and technologies, but also from other people. Creativity is something that we all should have in any any career or any job that we're doing uh, to be able to come up with solutions and uh, uh, and use critical thinking and curiosity and merge them and be able to come up with solutions that are creative and insightful for our stakeholders or just understanding of our world, world in general. The next and uh, the next characteristic is persistence, uh, which refers to the fact that you will be proven wrong a lot. And if you are someone who really takes it very personally, when you are proven wrong, then maybe a career in data science or data analytics is not for you because you will set up hypothesis and you would be proven, like maybe 80% of your hypothesis would be proven wrong. You will still have to do the analysis, but in 20% of the cases where you're successful, you will uncover really great insights and actually make an impact to the business you're working in. So this is all about you. 
and I feel like anyone can be a data analyst. I, from personal experience, I can say that I've worked with people from very varied backgrounds, which is what keeps me in data, because we come across people who are I've come across people who are uh, have an economics background, people who have an arts or history background, but they have found their way into data analytics and they're extremely su successful. So I would recommend anybody who is considering to think about what at the core uh, characteristics of a data analyst are. And if you fit those, definitely consider a career in data analytics. So moving on to what skills you need to develop to be an effective data analyst. This is considering uh, people who already have a career as a data analyst, or if you're just starting out. Well, you would be spending a lot of time just exploring the data, understanding the problem. And then once you have your key takeaways and insights, you would be partnering with your stakeholders or your leadership to make data-driven decision-making. And once you have a good repertoire of good insights and analysis, you can think about future data capabilities and building those data capabilities. So in a nutshell, you need to really spend time understanding the data, and especially when you are just starting out and understanding the problem, breaking it down, and then use your presentation skills to drive those decisions, drive those uh, in, uh, drive action from those insights. And I will also cover data-driven decision-making in the, in the next section where I'm talking about the people you should be working with, how to identify who plays what role in any given project. So let's move on. So to un analyze and understand the data, these are a few critical skills you will have need to have. You don't need to check all of these boxes in the in here, but as long as you check maybe three to four of the boxes, you should be in a good position to be able to start your career as a data analyst. And to be very effective, again, you need all of these skills. And communication and presentation, I would say, are equally as important as knowing uh, Python and SQL or data visualization and statistical analysis. And I would say uh, data visualization and communication are very closely linked because you need to think about who you're presenting your data to and then tailor your visualization based on that. So let's take an example at this point of what kind of a problem you would be encountering as a data analyst and how you would how you should be solving it effectively. Again, like this is a level deeper into storytelling with data, but let's look at a case study of a successful product launch. So you're a data analyst and you're presented with a question about how uh, your, a product manager has asked you a question about how should I think about whether the product I just launched is successful or not. So as a data analyst, you would look at this problem, which is very vague, admittedly, you should break it down into what the question being asked actually is. So what makes the product launch successful is the question you should definitely ask your product manager. But if you do not get a clear answer in that case too, you should think about at what kind of experience are we providing with this product? What is the reason we launched this product and how we measure the success? So we break down this problem in terms of a customer journey. Uh, a typical customer journey flow looks like a funnel. And we start out with the number of prospects and the number of signups. So when we talk about success in terms of prospects and signups, we're talking about whether or not the marketing campaigns and the uh, messaging has been successful. And if you've driven a lot of signups, then it means that the product launch was at least successful in getting people to sign up. Another problem that may be arising is that you are getting a lot of signups, but you may not be getting a lot of customers to log in or use the product. And then ultimately your renewals are suffering. So in this case, uh, 
I forgot to mention it at the beginning, but we are thinking about a subscription-based product where you are renewing every month or so. So when you put your data through this kind of a final analysis, you might find that there is a huge drop-off between the number of people who are signing up and the number of people who are logging in. Then uh, you let's say you find that, oh, even the logins are fine, but your renewals are still kind of low. So then you look at number of customers actually using the product after logging in. And if you find that actually the usage is down, then you would take that insight to your product manager and go deeper into what kind of enhancements or improvements you would make to the product because it seems like people are logging in but not finding the product useful enough to come back again and again. And when it comes time for, time for renewal, the the customer is not happy and they are not renewing. So this was like a very quick walkthrough of a generic product launch success example, but it shows you how you would break down the problem, use your critical thinking skills and use, use your logical reasoning to understand where you should find, what kind of insights you would find and the key takeaways and how you would nudge your or, or work with your stakeholders to be able to solve this kind of problem and create impact uh, with your business partners. And then, of course, to solve this problem, you would definitely need to know data gathering and cleaning skills. You would have to know where, once you have this problem structure in mind, you want to know how and where you would get the data on prospecting signups and construct that funnel flow. You would also want to create reporting tables or analysis tables to be able to join and understand which, whether this customer is also seen in the next step of the funnel and so on. And then you have to do cleaning and validation just to make sure you're not coming back with insights just because you're using incorrect data. And then you will do your exploratory data analysis like an extension of the problem that you were previously discussing could be like when when do we get the most signups? It could be like a day of the week where you have you see a lot of activity in in terms of signups, and that could be related to some kind of either campaign activity or just seasonality. So that you could go in many different places with doing your exploratory data analysis as well, and then when you present your data, you'll be using many of these data visualization techniques and tools to be able to share your insights with a broader audience. You would also be using data visualization in case of just understanding what the data is all about. Now, in the next section, I would talk to you about the knowing your people, which is you and the people section of this presentation. In any project, you would have a driver, an approver, a contributor, and an informed. Now, when you are starting out your career, most of you would be in the contributor's bucket. So you would be the person responsible, but it does not mean that you are just a small part of the whole equation. You will likely own the outcome of the part of the project you are contributing to. So the driver's responsibility is usually to plan out the project, divide it into different phases, set up timelines and milestones, and communicate with all the other three roles in this, in this chart. It's a very common way of looking at project, uh, the people involved in a project. And this is, again, applicable not just to analytics, but to any other project that you're working on. But knowing who the driver of your project is it makes it easier because then you know if you are stuck somewhere or if you need uh, help with prioritizing, you can go to the driver and get, uh, get their approval or uh, consult them on how to tweak the project that you, or part of the project you're working on and get the, Get, get moving on what you're working on. The next one is the approver. So approver is not 
always the highest ranking person on in your company. This is a misconception, but approver is should be selected by the driver such that they are able to provide helpful guidance to your project. So approver should be consulted whenever important milestones are reached and they can make a go no go decision, but they're also experts in their field. So for example, if you're working on a project in which um, you are looking at, um, let's say marketing budget and uh, med uh, media mix models, you should be looking, you, you should have an approver who may not be like the director of marketing because they're not really involved in the day-to-day uh, allocation of the budget or buying of the ads, but a digital marketer who is in the in the UI every day or like looking at the trends and, and knows the data really well. And when you reach a milestone of like, okay, I have these um, these features which are predicting that this is the budget allocation that could be, they can look at the data and give you guidance on whether or not you're heading in the right direction or not. And maybe suggest additional data points that you could consider. So again, approver should be someone who has very high domain knowledge and is able to make those go no go calls based on their domain knowledge. Then come the contributors. Like I said, uh, when you move ahead in your career, you are uh, becoming more of a leader than you would be uh, at a senior or staff level. Then you would become a driver of a lot of pro projects. Sometimes you could be driver in some projects and contributor in other projects. So just these, uh, these kind of roles are flexible based on the project you're on. So contributors, again, they do not just do their work and then go away. They own the section of the project they're assigned to. Like you could, for, for example, be providing subject matter expertise in a larger project, uh, which is beyond analytics sometimes and you're providing your data expertise in that case. So you own the data aspect and the deliverable of that project. And the driver could be a project manager or a product manager, and you go to them to consult them or provide an update to them whenever milestones are reached. And then the last uh, one is the informed. Uh, in a properly constructed project, or uh, the informed would involve some data leadership uh, people, depending on what the impact of the project is. So this is where your CEO or director, et cetera, would come, depending on how big the size of your team is. And this is the, the these are the people who would be notified on significant milestones. Approvers are involved in every single milestone and informed are, uh, informed are involved in sig when a significant milestone is reached. Uh, so for example, you have some uh, create, you found an insight, you've disproven some hypothesis. These are the people you would be presenting your data and insights and key takeaways to. And any of these roles could be decision makers as well. But the informed, you would want them to uh, be, you would, you would want them to be able to make critical decisions to have key call to actions in your presentation. And, and so that the impact is clear and the decision is easier for them to make. So that is all from my talk today. What I would like you to take away from this talk today is that a career in data is a continuous learning exercise. It is not just for people who have a certain background. Anyone can be an effective data analyst it all depends on the mindset. And as long as you have the right mindset and are keen on learning skills and have that learning mindset, you'll definitely be a successful and an effective data analyst. Thank you.